first I want to say, you guys, have you experience someone like this in your life where you're seeing this person and you think this is sheer evil this is darkness this behavior coming from this person is that real because it's like they don't care about anyone the only thing they care about is getting their way is maintaining control of the narrative is having the ultimate control over other people so when we're talking about the dark triad we are talking about narcissism subclinical psychopathy and machiavellianism and what that could look like in a person who might be in your life my name is Lise Colucci, and I'm here to help you understand and recover from narcissists in your life. So on one extreme, someone with personality disorders who lean toward this dark triad would be someone with extreme violent tendencies, someone even with criminal tendencies, okay? That would be on one far end with all kinds of traits that go around that. But what we're gonna talk about here is more on the other end of things, the more subtle dark triad. These people are highly manipulative. They are coercive and they have no empathy. Some people who have been with them might say they could feel the evil in them. In general, people who would classify as dark triad would be someone who is extremely antisocial in their behavior. And let's talk about what that can look like. So, you know, with narcissism, just basic garden variety narcissism, we're talking about someone who has a delusion of grandeur, someone who lacks the empathy to care about other people, someone who is highly self-absorbed and self-serving in their behaviors toward others and in their interactions with others, and someone who is exploitive in the way they go about getting things around others. So in other words, they're willing to exploit you, they're willing to use you, they're willing to manipulate you, they're willing to do these things in order to get what they want. Okay, when you add in subclinical psychopathy, you will add on top of that zero empathy plus a manipulation of that zero empathy. So in other words, they know they don't have any empathy for another person's position and they use that to manipulate things. They know the other person does and they don't. And so they will play off your empathy in order to manipulate situations. They will deliberately and calculatingly go after whatever it is they want through means that hurt you, that create drama for you, all without any care. And there's an impulsiveness about it. It's like a calculating, they see, they take, right? And there's a lot more that goes into it, but this is just some of the basics, okay? And then when you talk about Machiavellian, what we're talking about, the person who might seem forthcoming, okay, they might seem like they're being honest in what they're saying, but what they're doing is masterful lying and manipulation in order to get their way. They are so adept at the lies and so adept at the truth twisting that it's pretty much the means by which they go about attaining anything from another person. So all of these traits are people with no empathy. When you combine it together, you get what's called a dark triad. You get a highly manipulative, deeply coercive and forceful person who will do anything to control a narrative in order to get the results they want from other people, all without any care or concern for the other person. I have some examples of this later on on some behavior in someone that has all of these traits. In just a minute, we'll get to that. If you have experienced this, let me know in the comments. So remember, you know, narcissists can be self-absorbed and self-focused and self-directive. So everything that they relate to relates back to self, right? Like they can see something completely unrelated to them and they're like, oh, I remember when that happened to me or, you know, things like that, where they're just the garden variety narcissist is always referring to everything from self and then they're able to connect to it, all right? When you have the psychopathy in there as well, you have a more calculating, cynical, and callous person also, okay? And then the Machiavellian, you're talking about a strategic exploitation of other people and other people's trust. They're highly deceitful. 
So you'll notice with these people that they're always trying to have more. They're never satisfied with what's going on. They're never satisfied with you as a person. They're always seeking to pull more out of you, more from you, to take from others, to have multiple sources of supply in their life so that they are constantly receiving from other people. They'll even play victims, very different from the way a covert narcissist will play a victim. They'll play the victim with this like justified rage and anger about how other people are wrong. And then an inflated sense of self, an inflated ego that's basically like they're wrong and they are victimizing me and I'm not going to stand for it, right? So it's this sort of aggressive, assertive victim stance versus the more covert narcissist stance of, you know, I didn't do it. It wasn't my fault. Look how everyone's coming after me. It's them. It's not me. You know, that's totally different. This is more like, yeah, they're the one who's wrong. Well, you know, for instance, if they cheat on you, which they're going to, because this is kind of the nature of these people. If they're cheating on you in a, in a romantic relationship and then they turn it around to say, well, I never said we were exclusive when everything's implied that you are or everything, you know, you've been with them for many, many years and it's implied that you're in a relationship. Nothing's ever been talked about on the other end either where we're in an open relationship. No, no, they basically they twist lies back to making it seem like you should have known better or you're the one bothering them with your emotions and feelings about a situation. These people are prone to anger and aggression when they have been caught, okay? Or when they're questioned. They are more prone to an aggressive stance and a more reactive anger stance than the more covert narcissists are. And we're gonna talk soon about the vulnerable dark triad, which includes those covert narcissists on another video. So because of this anger and because of this more aggressive way of being when they are caught or when they're questioned, this is why if you have to deal with them, if you can't get away from them, or if you're choosing not to leave someone like this, a softer approach to the disconnect and to the disengagement that you might try to do when you use a technique like gray rock, okay? So you might want to yellow rock, which basically is a polite backing away from a situation without any engagement toward the thing that they're angry about or the thing that you're accusing them of, right? Even though you're right to accuse them of the thing. It's like if you have a person like this in your life, and you try to get some justice for yourself or some justification for a situation or an argument or whatever where you need to talk about what you're feeling, you might as well forget it, back away in a quieter, more polite way and go on with your day because once the aggression starts, they're going to need to flip that narrative to them being right and you being wrong and all kinds of drama is going to ensue and it could be dangerous for you. Remember, there's an antisocial aspect to this, and bullying is one of the things that they love to do, okay? Bullying is a means of control for these people. But Criticizing might come out. Just constantly picking you apart, picking apart everything you do, being highly critical, which of course causes a reaction in you, and of course will make you feel all kinds of things, right? And then when you do have the reaction, toward them for the bullying. Go back to the last thing I said, out comes the aggression and the hostility towards you. So again, remember, this is their issue. This isn't your problem. They are the ones who are bullying. They are the ones who are being critical. That doesn't mean what they're critical about is accurate. That doesn't mean anything's wrong with you. It is literally their feelings of grandeur not your issue. So the more you can disengage from what they're doing, the safer you can stay from their attacks and hopefully then get away from it. And you know, this is a highly, highly manipulative person that we're talking about. It's not going to be your basic manipulations you can see right through. You might see right through it, but the layers and the level of manipulation goes so deep and like it's just huge within the relationship. It's pretty much how they relate is through manipulation, that it's in everything. And so getting away from it can sometimes be very difficult because 
you, it's, it becomes hard to tell truth from a lie. All right. So I've talked to people who have been with people like this and they've asked me, is this a narcissist? What is this? What is going on? And I tell them, you know, I can't diagnose someone. Obviously, it's not what we're here for. However, what I'm hearing are traits of a lot of different things. Let's look at this, okay? This person has narcissistic tendencies for sure. Okay, that's obvious. They are full of themselves, okay? And they don't care about you. They don't care about anyone. However, there's more to it. And so as we start talking, we start seeing things like coercive situations with intimacy and things that are so coercive that the person never would have done those things in their life unless this person had forced them to. And when I say forced, I mean manipulated things so that the person is saying yes without actually saying yes. Does that make sense? Have you been there? This is really, really dangerous. They can convince you to do all kinds of things, to break laws, to use substances, to do things outside of your own personal choices for your life, your own sort of morals for your life and you find yourself in the middle of it and you don't even know how you got there. The coercion is so strong. Okay, here's how I see it. We spend our time and our lives in relationships with other people trying to understand ourselves. okay? We try to understand who we are, how to be better people, how to improve our lives, how to improve ourselves, right? Like how many of you out there do that? Probably a lot of you. You're anyone you're relating to, you're listening to them. You are trying to understand their story. You're trying to understand their point of view. So you can see a lot of our energy and focus goes into both self-healing, self-growth, and into understanding and relating to others, right? Well, these people, all narcissists really, but in particular, people with this many dark traits, all of their attention is going into what does it get me, okay? All of their attention is and focus and energy and brain power is going into how can I take this situation and make it what I want it to be, period, without any concern for anyone else because they don't have any. So all of their focus is on that. So do you see what you're literally up against when you're dealing with people like this is somebody that that's focus is so in one direction toward one person being them, while your focus is being spread in different directions and on trying to maintain a relationship with someone who is completely self-focused. So this is why it can never work in a healthy way with a person who is like this, okay? The best thing with these situations is to get yourself away from it. Someone with traits in the dark triad will never be healthy in a relationship. They will always be manipulating. They will always be self-focused and hurtful towards you because they will step on you. They will use you as a platform to stand on to lift themselves up higher. Does that make sense? These are the types of people that will have you as a partner for a trophy to show off to other people, for a secretary to do all the work while they go be with someone else for other parts of their life. They are the type that are chronic and serial cheaters, okay? They are the type that will steal. They're the type that will lie. They will get aggressive and they will get away with it. A lot of times when you're with someone like this, the urge to try and fix it is there, to try and get them to see who they are, to Get them to, like a lot of people who have been with people like this say, how could someone be so cruel? I need to understand that. I need to know why and how that person could treat someone like this. They need to know that people shouldn't be treated like this. Well, guess what, guys? They don't care. They don't care. When they see you coming at them with, you know, shame, shame, you shouldn't be doing that, or how could you? They're either laughing at you or they are dismissing you. They truly don't care about anyone else besides themselves. And that is a painful truth, but it is a truth. So get away from these people. If you find yourself in having left them and continuing to think about them and trying to figure out how to fix it or figure out what could have been different, 
please work on letting that go because it is nothing but toxic and it continues the toxic in your mind to have to keep thinking about them. Check out this next video that I have coming up for more on traits of narcissism.